We are back now with some major new developments regarding the health of Virginia Congresswoman Jennifer Wexton. Today, she said she will not seek re-election after being diagnosed with progressive supranuclear palsy. This is a modified diagnosis from April when Wexton announced she had Parkinson's disease. Joining us now to discuss this disorder is Dr. Nicholas Stryker, a neurologist at MedStar Washington Hospital Center. Thanks so much for joining us this afternoon. Sure, happy to be here. How would you describe this disorder? It's a, it's a great question, and I think it also speaks to her initial diagnosis of Parkinson's disease. So it's, it's in that family of Parkinson's-related disorders. Um, some people call them Parkinson plus disorders. And so you get similar things if you've ever seen anyone with Parkinson's disease where they're a little bit stiff, they're a little rigid, they have trouble moving, of course, kind of like Michael J. Fox. Um, but these people often don't respond really well to typical Parkinson's treatment. And sometimes the disease course is a little bit more rapid or progressive than with a typical Parkinson's disease. So tell us what could be ahead for Wexton. How does this progress? What, what do the signs become over time? Sure. So early in the disease course, it may be hard to differentiate from something like Parkinson's where people are a little bit stiff or rigid or having falls. But what's kind of unique about this disease is that falls sometimes happen really early in the disease course. So sometimes people can have a lot of trouble, you know, getting into falls, getting injured. There's also a lot more trouble sometimes with sleep, sometimes more trouble with eating and swallowing. So those things kind of tend to progress a little bit more rapidly after the diagnosis is made. Do you know how many people this affects every year? Um, it's more of a, a, a rare disorder in terms of our over, overall Parkinson's. I think it's sort of on the order of about um, maybe one in the, you know, 10 to 20,000 range on average. What's the prognosis and treatment for this? So usually people do get worse. Um, we do sometimes try to treat them with our typical Parkinson's medications like carbidopa, levodopa, but it doesn't always respond well to it. So people usually progress. Um, and sometimes the main things we try to do for them are just supportive, making sure there's somebody to take care of them, making sure um, that if they have mobility issues that, that they're supported and don't, don't fall. So a lot of the care is supportive and there are some treatments for it, but typically these patients don't always uh, respond very well to them. I was reading that there's no cure for this and I'm wondering, are there any promising treatments on the horizon? So there's always area of research um, that people are looking at. So the main thing that goes behind this disorder, which is slightly different from Parkinson's, is an abnormal protein called uh, tau, um, which is similar actually to Alzheimer's. So probably the future is similar to some of the medications that just got put on the market for Alzheimer's disorder, which is an anti-amyloid medication. In the future, we could start seeing something like anti-tau treatments for this, although none are, are on the market yet. I was reading that Representative Wexton is getting therapy for her disorder. Is that a typical treatment and how effective is that? So my suspicion is she's probably getting the typical Parkinson's treatment, which is what she was on or what she was diagnosed with originally, which is the carbidopa levodopa. There can be some response, but one of the hallmarks of these Parkinson plus disorders um, like progressive supranuclear palsy is that patients often don't respond very well. So she's probably getting some treatment, but the treatment probably just isn't working all that well, which is sometimes a cue that you don't have Parkinson's but have this diagnosis. Do you have any recommendations for caregivers who might be living with someone who has this? Yeah, it's certainly tough to take care of somebody who has a progressive disorder. Um, I think the most important thing we try to emphasize is safety, you know, really making sure people don't, don't fall, really trying to make sure that um, they get you know, good sleep, which can, which can help, um, and really just trying to provide support for the individual as they're kind of becoming more rigid and less mobile. And how long does the average person live with this? So the usual disease course is a few years after diagnosis, um, so probably around two or three years, although that's just a range. Um, that's also what differentiates it from Parkinson's disease, which can be much longer. Um, this and other related diseases tend to be a little bit more rapid in their decline. Well, Dr. Nicholas Stryker, you've been very helpful. We so appreciate your insight from MedStar Washington Hospital Center. You have a great day. Thanks. Thanks for having me. And we'll be right back.